you're looking, this is bills. This yeah. is not cost. This is the, the difference is okay. the, we're going to talk got, about that in a okay. minute. Thank this you. is this Thank is you. what's actually billed, but <laughs> there's you. a huge gap in the rising costs. Very that, good. Thank that's you. That's the point I was kind of trying to make. Okay. Sorry, I, did, I wasn't catching what you were asking. Thank you, Tom. That's why we have Tom here. Uh, page eight again, just to talk about this is it's kind of hard to you know these peer groups are always a bit arbitrary, but it made sense to us in Rathelis that these are representative groups of uh, uh, other water areas, some of them in Michigan, some of them outside Michigan that had the same characteristics of Flint. You can talk, you can always add or subtract, but generally, no matter what you have as a peer group, Flint is substantially above. You see, the average residential bill again is fifty-three dollars, fifty-four dollars. The average for this peer group is about twenty, so over double the average of a peer representative peer group. Why do you ask? That's on page nine. Uh, and again, some of the, let me just go through real briefly through these drivers of the relative high rates. So again, we started with what drove rates in Flint, what what made them double. This is a different question. How why are they higher than other areas, and, and what is driving it? First is water supply and treatment costs. We'll talk. We've talked quite a bit about this. At a high level, it costs the city of Flint about ten dollars to produce a thousand gallons of water. Ten dollars to produce a gallon, a thousand gallons of water. It costs two dollars for our peer utility. So ten dollars versus two dollars, and a lot of that re the report goes through the detail. A lot of that is again maintaining the Flint water treatment plant and buying water. Most of these other urban areas and most of these other peer groups just have one or the other. So in a sense, uh, during this period, at least this year, we're doubling up costs a little bit. Uh, the system size. Let's get back to what, this is the same point I made before, but uh, look at it another way. So Flint has 96 feet per customer of pipes versus about 80 per peer group. So again, this kid, it's another way of saying the same thing. There's a system built for 200,000. You don't have 200,000. It's high fixed costs. So as you have this more pipe to maintain, it costs more than other areas. Uh, the same point, looking in another way, that's also population decline was greater in Flint, not surprisingly, than in other urban areas. High fixed cost, pipe system that's overbuilt and hasn't been maintained, and declining usage, declining population. You know, clearly it leads to higher rates and deficit if rates don't increase. Transfers to other funds, about 17% of the water system, not sewer, about 17% of the water system revenues are transferred to other funds within the city. Now some of these are normal in other, uh, you know, local units all do it, but for our peer group it's 7%. So there's more transfers from the water fund, 17% of the, of the budget versus seven percent for peer groups and again this what's called non-water revenue I briefly talked about that Flint only bills about 50 or 60 50 to 60 depending on the year 50 to 60 percent of the water that they buy wholesale they only bill about 50 to 60 percent and the average for everyone else is closer to 90 percent so that non-billed revenue is not a big dollar amount but there's a big gap between others between Flint and the peer group now this there's two or three components of this non-billed revenue. One is just what you'd expect as you flush hydrants and all that stuff. There's no one to guard. Uh, um, others, but the other two big ones, and I have no idea which is which, is um, it's just leakage, you know, physical leakage of the system. Water's just flowing out of the pipes and theft. And, and those are the three big categories. We don't know what makes up that 17%. Uh, retiree health care wasn't a big dollar amount, but retiree health care in Flint is about 7% of the operating budget, about 5% for the other peer groups. So generally, those are the m six main components of why rates are higher in Flint than in other areas, other a peer group of others. Page, t the next page, page 10, I don't think we have to spend a lot of time on it. Just since it is such a big issue, we threw it in. You'll see that top line is millions of gallons. Consumption goes down. High fixed cost business expenditures stay about flat. Um, page eleven, I think it's basically the same story. So maybe we don't need to go through the details now. This just gives a little more detail of the breakout of those six things I talked about that are drivers of the gap between us and peer groups. But in the interest of time, let's go to the next main point, which is you're good on time. Yeah, I know. I'm getting. I'm running out of. All right. To say, All so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm okay. So page 12, let's go to the next topic, which is 
the point we wanted to make is even a $53 average residential bill, it is not even close right now to matching costs. Now, part of that is temporary because this is built off of the 2017 budget that's been submitted to the city, and that budget ha is uh, essentially doubling up in 2017 because the KWA costs are starting to hit the system. At the same time, at least for most of the year, we'll still be purchasing wholesale water from Great Lakes Water Authority. We'll show that. 17 is a little weird, but even after you get past 17 in that one time, you still have a huge gap. In 17, the average typical, typical bill is $53, as I keep saying. Just to meet current costs, it would almost have to be $92. So there's a, right now, in 17, given the budget that's been submitted, there's a $34 gap between what's being charged and if they were going to cover their entire costs. Not changing their costs, just taking their costs and covering it. There's a couple reasons for that, and it's, it's kind of a broken record. Current revenues are much less than when rates were set many years ago. And you know the way you do water rates like you did in the electric industry is you take all your costs and then you set rates. And then you keep those rates until you do a new cost analysis. So revenues have been down since the last time they set rates and costs have gone up. I think it, um, another way to look at it is page 13. This is a little hard to see. And again, I, I, I'm it's easy to take this chart out of context. You see the blue line, which is just a historical I've shown you a couple of times. That green line is our best guess is if nothing changed, if we didn't do anything, we just sat back passively, rates will double in the next, ten, in the next five years. They would go from $53 this year to $110 in 2022. A huge gap. You see that first jump is really the, not the growth so much. It's just that current bills are so insufficient for, for costs. Now that comes down in 2018, as I said, but still the exercise is, is shown on page 14, my last page. And this is one of the key takeaways, is that right now average residential bill is $54. If we don't do anything, it's gonna double in the next five years. So just as a target, if you said, well, a normal increase should be 4% a year. So if we took that $54 and we said, okay, for the next five years it grows 4%, it should be $65. So the, the policy question is how do we bring that $110 down to $65? I don't have an answer here. We're going to talk about it some more. Uh, you know, clearly this is the project, one of the projects going forward. But let me tell you what the categories are that is kind of the same thing I've just been saying the last 10 minutes. One, operating costs have to be reduced closer to pure averages. There are just operating costs in the current system that if you're going to reduce rate, you either ra have to raise rates to, to fund the current cost structure or you have to bring costs down to pure averages. To this investment in the water distribution system to both right-size the system, but then also to reduce the non-revenue loss, which is lethal to affect. Um, three, we have to work collectively to find low-cost or no-cost infrastructure financing options. This is to reduce the future capital costs that are embedded in that forecast, and it's everything we're talking about now, whether there are resources at the state or the federal or the private to help subsidize and support some of these costs going forward. Uh, we have to uh, talk about the transfers to other city funds. Uh, and finally, the thing we're going to talk about at the next time is how do we make sure we pick the water supply going forward that ensures high quality, low risks, and then obviously the lowest cost to Flint is the new water supply. I should say as I was going through that forecast, this forecast just assumes kind of the basic water supply and backup water decisions. And it's the KWA, but it doesn't even include fully backup systems. So there's a lot more work to be done incorporating those, those costs. So again, there's, uh, there's, we're happy to answer questions. There's a lot more detail in the full pack, but the real takeaway is rates have gone up. We've talked about why. If we don't do anything, rates are gonna double again. And so we need to work collectively to find out how we, how we shift that curve down towards a more normal increase in the future. All right. Thanks, Nick. Um, okay, we have ample time for discussion on this issue, so I don't want you to feel rushed. Uh, if it goes up to 10.15, then I'll cut it so we can move the, uh, move the agenda and get out of here on time. So or if there are no questions. Or if there are no questions, Nick will be happy. So, I can uh, help Nick with that then. <laughs> Dr. Reynolds. Uh, we're talking about residential rates. Yes. But the question is, what is the impact of the loss of GM 
Delphi, Buick City on residential rates. Yeah. There are uh, and operating costs. A couple things I'd say to that, and then Tom can correct me and give you the details. Okay. Is number one, this was just residential, but as this whole story of declining consumption and with fixed costs is exacerbated by the reduction in business use too. So just across the board, as business use goes down, it raises rates for everybody because you have to cover the whole thing. So, uh, there are two, th two specific issues, Genesee County and then GM. Uh, some of it has in been in better than rates. The rate design, my understanding, Tom can correct me, is the rate design last time I did it assumed Genesee County would move. So the higher rates are in better than that, but not GM. So then it becomes going forward as GM or on the system or not. C clearly higher usage by definition means lower or average cost for everybody. Um, uh, I had another good point, Dan, and I forgot it right now. But um, a lot of the business was lost, you know, historically years ago. Uh, specifically, talking about two recent, more recent issues Nick referred to, Genesee County uh, becoming a customer of GLIWA directly and not fr not through the city. That cost the city about um, $1.2 million. In, uh, well, that's gross or net? That was basically uh, net. That was after they purchased the water from GLIWA. They, they got – Okay, uh, as long as it's net. Then. Yes. Um, that cost the city about $1.2 million. That was reflected in the, in the rate study that was completed for the city uh, for fiscal year 2014. Um, but at that time, what – you know, that – that rate study occurred after Glee, uh, Detroit DWSD canceled the contract with Flint and the city made the decision that they would go on the Flint River uh, as, a, as an interim measure. And so the rate study was based on being on the Flint River and then, then starting KWA operations in approximately uh, December of this year. Um, uh, as in regards to GM, we are assume, you know, basically the forecast would assume that GM would come back on, and the indication we've been given is that they've they've told the city that they they are not coming back on until they will come that they'll come back on when the city starts to uh, treating KWA water. But the basic issue is higher usage means lower average bills. So what yes, whatever we can do to increase usage, including large business customers. Right, and certainly if we can attract businesses, that would help. And, and one other comment I want to make in general, when we talk about declining usage, we do rate studies for utilities all across the country. And basically, every utility we work for is seeing declining per capita usage. Um, even in cities that are doing well economically, customers are using less water. And so if you have a 1% to 2% decline per year in, in usage, that typically equates to you have to raise bills 1% to 2% a year just to get back to even, never mind, uh, you know, typical inflation of costs uh, and then other additional regulatory and capital requirements that many utilities are facing. Um, so it, it's an issue we're seeing everywhere, and it's, it's certainly not unique to Flint, but certainly in Flint when we're losing population and well, that just exacerbates the situation. And, and related to that then is, you know, we're told constantly uh, to conserve water and we get the uh, low-volume flush uh, toilets and all these other things. So we think we're saving on one hand and now we're being charged more rates on the other hand. How, I guess that's a policy issue that's beyond this discussion, mm -hmm. but somehow that's gonna have to be worked out. I guess we'll all say it, more. It, yeah, it, I mean, there are, two, there are two issues for an individual bill. You know, obviously your individual homeowner, the less you use since so much, since so much of the bill is variable, your individual bill goes down. For the system as a whole, you need to reduce your fixed costs to manage the lower top line. But until you do, higher costs are spread out among everyone. It's it's the endless battle. I mean, again, I saw it in the electricity business all the time, which is lower consumption, which is average efficiency, which you want to increase. At the same time, you have these higher fixed costs that need to be spread. Council Vice President. Yes, I have a question for clarification. Mm -hmm. um, the numbers seem really low when you talk about a water bill. Mm -hmm. Is that referring to water and sewer oh, usage? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, sh I meant to say at the beginning, this is water only. We didn't look at the sewer bill. The additional sewer bill it, um, is really outside our scope. So the average bill, there's some debate about this, but maybe the average bill is $120 or so. So the average sewer bill is actually higher than the water bill. 
Right, because that would make a, a big difference w if this is publicly given out. Yeah. Uh, there would be such an uproar because that is not what people see. I yeah. mean, you could look at a family of maybe even one, and it could be 90-some dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And so it would be shocking. So if you're talking about an increase on top of already not even the sewer. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I, we'll do a better job of up front saying this was only water. We didn't look at sewer at all. Sewer's a different issue. It, the $53 average bill does not include any sewer costs. You're right. So, and I, but we don't have a forecast for sewer rate increases either. I, I have no idea, honestly, whether they would raise at current cost levels, whether they would rise as fast as the water bill. I just don't know. We didn't yeah. look at it. And, and I think according to the city, and uh, we do have our financial officer here, and she can maybe clear it up, but just for uh, a residential to be hooked up to receive water is like about 58, 60-some dollars every month. And we're not even talking what commercial is, which is, I think, over 100 and something. So, uh, Well, th this average bill includes both the fixed and the variable component, if that's what you're asking. Maybe not, but uh, maybe there's initial hookup charge. I don't know. But this is the average bill for water for the average resident that consumes the average amount, in it. but it's a total bill. Right. And, and I know you put in suggestions on how to maybe reduce the bill. Right. Uh, things that we can look at. I know leakage has always been talked about. I don't know uh, the real answer other than a massive yeah. infrastructure uh, project, but I think that um, we need to be aware and also consider the effects of the sewage usage and charges because uh, I guess the citizens need to know in their planning, in their decision, and in the shock that it will give them once these figures come out. Yep, I think that's fair. Thank you. Okay, um, just real brief comment on based on the, the council vice president's comments. So these documents usually we, we put them on the website. Um, will there need to be an additional add to make it very clear that this sure. is water only? Uh, I think so you that change so the title from Flint Residential Water Rate Analysis, big parentheses, this does not include sewer. Okay. All right, that, that'll be helpful. So we'll, we'll just wait for to put it up. Uh, Jim? Yeah, on, on when you when I was looking at your peer, uh, your peer uh, representation of how you got some of this, I think there's another component here that might be uh, thought about also is, is I know in, in many of these areas, these other communities have the ability to expand to wholesale customers where I don't think you have, we have the ability here because you're surrounded by uh, a service that is doing just that. Mm -hmm. you know? So your wholesale customers like Township, Denahan, and, and others, uh, the others have a chance to, to push some of their costs of losing uh, uh, some of the people. Mm -hmm. They'll mm -hmm. move out to the, a township and right. certainly get water again, but it'll just some of the wholesale, yeah. so they get a chance to pick some of that up. I, I think that's true. We, we didn't look specifically at that in the peer group, but clearly the ability to continue to raise that top line is important for and others. We don't, uh, you know, again, we didn't look specifically at that. You're putting a little stuff here that, right. that unless you get another customer right. in the city. Right. Uh, I, it limits growth. Yeah. It, it limits growth. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I, I just wanted to get some clarification because I was thinking that according to the report that the KWA was going to require that we build uh, a reservoir and that was going to cost about 25 million and then there was going to be some treatment for the Flint River water. We have yeah, not. This is, th you know, that forecast as I was saying is, is kind of a bare bones. Mm -hmm. This has some of the primary costs of hooking up to KWA but doesn't have any of the costs of the backup within it. So, you know, this is as we get into the second part of the analysis, which is what is the right primary and backup water source, mm -hmm. we'll get finer detail as to what the cost, both capital and operating costs going forward. That, that wasn't this project. This was just an indicative what rates could go. It will go up or down as we, as the city picks the primary and secondary and backup water okay, source. Okay, because I was thinking the cost yeah. of the unknown. Yeah, okay. no, we'll come back next time, well not next time, but we'll come back when we come back and say, here are the options is basically the three primary water options. Here's how, here's how they rank on quality, reliability, mm -hmm. um, 
risk and cost. And then we'll include that into the forecast of rates. Uh, Mary? Mary, do we have any others? No. Uh, one quick question. So uh, I know that you mentioned, uh, I understand there's leakage rate. It's about 35, 40%. Well, we didn't really say. We said non-revenue water is 50 to 60, and that's okay. a combination of leakage, theft, and the normal stuff you do like flush hydrants that are in there. And I don't know what the breakup is, but go ahead. Okay. Um, theft, uh, explain theft because if someone hears that – there's, there's not much to explain because we don't have a lot of detail that we're doing yeah. how, what's broken up or how it works, whether a water is being bypassed by meters. I, you know, I, I really don't have any detail as to how that all works. Okay. Uh, Harvey, if, if I could, and uh, the general will keep me honest, but I, I think there is an RFP. We've been working with the city and EPA to put out an RFP to look at hydraulic modeling throughout the city. And that should help answer some of the questions relative to leakage and flow and where some of those issues are. And I think that's just being perfected now as, as we meet. So in the very near future, I think we'll have some better answers from a engineering aspect to your questions. Is that, is that okay, General? Absolutely, you're correct. I just had a question I missed when you were talking about the non-revenue water being the, like, hydrant flushes, leakage. What else? Uh, that. You know, bypassing okay. meters. It's also uh, sometimes uh, unmetered usage that, that you're aware of. Sometimes at city facilities, they, they it not, and I shouldn't say unmetered, sometimes it's unmetered or metered, but it's just not billed to the city. So some of it's normal, some of it isn't. But clearly, it's much higher in Flint than Pearson. On, on that point, Nick or Keith, because uh, I'm not aware of it, but I wondered if anyone was aware of whether or not there's been a a study of meters. I mean, I know we've got some old meters in the city, but I don't know that they've been systematically studied uh, to see what uh, what are our efficiency rate or how many are over age or not working. And it's probably um, more appropriate for the city to respond to that, General. But um, I do know that there is some work being done with meters throughout the city, and so that certainly is one aspect of it: is old meters that are. Not in a, uh, that are inappropriately calibrated, so we'll continue to work on that. And I do know, and I know very little, but I do know that there was investment a few years ago in some in additional meter work, but I just don't know the details of how much and how effective. Uh, Council for Vice President. Yes, regarding the meters, uh, I know there were hundreds of new meters brought in because the current ones are failing, and also they're given incorrect uh, amounts on people's bills and it's very frustrating for a person to uh, deal with that because they're paying over what they should be and it's hard to get adjustments I and the project kind of came to a standstill as we're going through our budget situation uh, the loss of our DPW director and now I don't know where we're at with that stage uh, I do not see a representative from that department here today but uh, that needs to – oh, is she? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if she's able to answer that a little bit further, but uh, if, that if that program can continue to help the residents. Uh, Rich, do you have a comment? I, I had a question, I think, Tom, probably for you. Um, is there a correlation between um, raw water purchase, s quote, standard treatment cost – and population. It, there should be a close correlation when you normalize it on a per gallon basis. Um, it, and especially if you approach that um, typical level of non-revenue water. The challenge is with the non-revenue water is, is we only bill about 50% of what we treat for all the various reasons we've already talked about. So the cost would be higher than basically direct, and that would be correlated then to the non-revenue component. But I in general, typically, now th there, there is a vast difference in cost uh, for, for water supply. You know, KWA is going to be a relatively affordable raw water source and then treating it, and that would be, and that's less expensive than buying water from GLUA, we believe. But, of course, uh, some of those costs are still being finalized, but we certainly believe that, you know, that 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 will still be the case is that KWA plus uh, Flint treatment uh, w would be the lower cost option than purchasing water from Gliwa. That's question number two. We're going to come back and talk about that when we have the details. 
Any other comments on this? Just out of curiosity, so that you know, looking at that one chart where Flint as is the highest among peer groups, um, what are some of the short-term things that the city can begin to do to drive those costs? Was that for the next presentation? I mean, I mean, because that that's that's shocking when you see that. Yeah. It depends what you mean by short-term. The answer is the things we talked about at the end, but there are no short-term fixes. fix cost system, there are things you can do, things you could start at right now as you're working through the 17 budget, whether it be marginal changes, it really takes longer to get this more fundamental change in the system. Uh, Dr. Sullivan. I'm wondering, um, General, um, as we're including in the fast start uh, in some blocks um, replacement or repair of mains, I, I mean, I don't know what roughly what percentage of of the lead service line replacement program is actually going to address those, but do you have a sense of, you know, if that could help in reducing the amount of water loss in the mains because we're including that in the lead service line? Well, the um, the, the the main focus of uh, the DWRF application is specifically looking at the water main breaks in those areas of greatest concentration of water main breaks. But for the first phase, at least, we're going to focus on uh, water main breaks plus lead service lines in the greatest concentration. Uh, in subsequent years, it may, it may shift a little bit, depending upon whether there's any movement to reconfigure the water system, if that's even possible, given the funds uh, that may be available, or, or whether or not we sort of start replacing just the mains themselves. There's a lot of work to be done there, though, um, to take care of that issue. But obviously, the, the, the breaks are all known. Um, it's probably the least effective way to replace mains is the way we're doing now, which is fixed to failure. So uh, we clearly need to, to change our program, um, and, and to the extent we can do that, starting with DWRF, I'm all in favor of it, and I think it's going to be great. Uh, but I don't think it'll be enough to replace all the mains that are needed to be replaced. Okay, any other uh, questions or comments? All right, uh, thank you, Nick, for that report. Um, so moving the agenda, we uh, there was a resolution that was submitted by Sylvester Jones. Uh, we get word that uh, through Aoni Gilchrist that Sylvester would like to table this resolution until he's able to address it in person, so we're going to honor that. Um, uh, excuse me. Yes. You're the, I would like that word to come through me. Oh. You're getting word from me I get that a word we're from tabling me. that. Okay, getting word from you. My, my apologies, Mayor. We got the word from the Mayor, all right, uh, that you're tabling that resolution. And uh, the next meeting is uh, May 20th. Uh, you will receive... Um, um, a, an email from, from me regarding the uh, recommendations for the subcommittees in terms of how uh, we like to uh, the subcommittees to begin to review those. And so we'll hopefully get that to you uh, before close of business on Monday. So we'll have that discussion. Uh, are there any other comments for from anyone, member of FWIC, before we turn it over for, for closing remarks from the governor? All right, uh, governor. Again, I think we had a very healthy discussion today. I appreciate the work um, from Treasury working with the city and the county on these issues. Um, the thing I would really put a, a caveat on all this to reinforce what Nick said is, is this was really forecasted based on existing pieces of information and the real question, the real work that needs to be done is how do we change that curve? Um, and so I hope everyone comes out of here understanding that there's a serious problem that needs to be resolved. Um, but I hope and I believe everyone at this table is firmly committed to coming up with better resolutions to what we saw in terms of these forecast numbers and that we need to really continue this work. So I hope people aren't premature in terms of drawing final conclusions but realize this defined the problem. Now let's work on the solution um, to put that in place and that will um, be important work and we'll be looking forward to future reports um, this is something we need to do with some urgency, though, um, because the longer we delay these decisions, it just continues this path of added cost to people because the bills are higher than anyone would want them to be. 
So let's work hard on getting resolutions with some urgency in place that can help change that cost curve to something that's better for the citizens of Flint, and at the same time, make sure we have a long-term high-quality source of water. So I just encourage that positive mind thought process through this as we go. A lot more work to be done, so I appreciate that. I don't know if you have anything else you'd like to add to that, Mayor. No, you said it. That's exactly what we want to work for. Great. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you.